I remember very clearly the moment when I came out as gay for the first time. It was to my best friend during our junior high school, junior high school days in Okinawa. He replied to my coming out like this, oh, are you? That's fine, in a bland tone. Funnily enough, as the sort of blandness was his usual way of speaking, I felt like that he really accepted me. And actually, he never changed his attitude toward me, which saved me from drowning in feelings of loneliness and alienation. After that, during my senior high school days, I came out three more friends, and they stayed good friends of mine. Such coming out experiences helped me a lot to confirm myself. And over a longer period, I came out to the people one by one, and I became more and more open about being gay. It was when I was called for an interview for the Graduate School of the Uni University of Tokyo that I first really considered presenting as openly gay in my public life. Surrounding on three sides by all professors and lecturers in the cultural anthropology course, I stated that I intended to research gay bias and gay community consciousness in Shinjuku Nichome from my own perspective of a gay man. From then on, whenever I got hired as a part-time lecturer at universities, I would tell students about my sexual orientation. I still do so today, and for the last two decades, I have been writing articles and lecturing about sexual diversity or LGBT rights as a gay scholar and activist. <coughs> Living as an openly gay man like this, I do have to say that I come across a few comments that make me feel uneasy. Among the most common things I hear are the following. Straight people don't come out as straight, so why do you come out as gay? Why do gay people say that they are gay even though they don't need to? I find that people who say these kind of things have a pretty limited view of sexual orientation. For them, sexual orientation is only about sexual desire, sexual behavior, or sexual identities. But it's not only about these things. Sexual orientation is also about relationships that people cherish in life and talk about daily, and also about social frameworks and institutions in which people live. Imagine what happens when your heterosexual family members or colleagues or good friends get married. Don't they, talk, don't they talk about it with the people around them? Don't you celebrate it? Of course, sometimes you may not feel like celebrating if you don't like them very much. <laughs> but usually you do. How about when they are expecting a child? Don't they share the happy news? Even if they don't get married, don't they hear your heterosexual friend talk about their love? When they have anxieties or issues with relationships, don't they sometimes ask for your advice? If knowing of your friends do, I suppose you might need to reflect why they don't. Anyway, it's clear that heterosexual people talk about their sexual orientation every day and everywhere. And it often forms the basis of friendship and social scenes. In order to better understand this particular aspect of sexual orientation, I think it's helpful to think about a question like the following. Why do heterosexual people say that they are heterosexual even though they don't need to? So why exactly? It's because being heterosexual is a kind of role automatically assigned to everyone, regardless of their real sexual orientation, 
unless they refuse to play it in a clear and obvious way. In this sense, it's also important to note that roles in societies are essentially tied to performances. And by that, I mean that people repeatedly demonstrate they are heterosexual in order to show that they play their assigned roles as heterosexual suitably. While I'm at it, let me up touch upon the common remarks that straight people don't come out. You'd be wrong if you took this mean that heterosexual people don't talk about their sexual orientation. They talk and talk and talk. But if you mean that they don't come out of the closet, you'll be right because they have never been in the closet. Heterosexuality as a role is deeply related to the functions that marriage has served for a long time. Marriage has been a social system for the reproduction of ethnic groups or for the generation of economic and social networks. But things are quite a bit different in modern societies because now loving each other is the most central factor, core factor in marriage in modern societies. Most of us live in societies where such modern marriage is prevalent, but functions and images of traditional marriage remain with us. And it has a lot to do with the heterosexual's role. Nevertheless, in many countries, marriage has changed dramatically and more radically by the recognition of same-sex marriage or civil union among gay couples. But Japan has yet to do so. This lack of the recognition often places gay people into heartbreaking situations. I personally can never forget what I saw at the funeral of a friend of mine who was the CEO of a gay business company. He passed away, away suddenly in his room and it was his partner who discovered the body. During the funeral rites where family members and friends were clearly separated as per tradition, his partner had to attend ju as just one of his friends. The sad expression on his face turned into one of profound grief and confusion when the MC placed a final exclusive call for relatives to transfer the coffin to hers and to get on a bus to the crematorium. He was standing rigid, frozen in place. At the last minute, just before the bus left, a staff member of the gay company who knew their relationship got him on the bus. But even then, I wonder just how much he could let go and show the depths of his emotion as he said his final goodbyes. The faces of grief, misery, and desolation when gay people talked about their loss of their partners continued to weigh heavily on me. Regardless of someone's sexual orientation, the passing away of a life partner is a depressing event for the bereaved. However, for gay people, it often happens that they cannot continue to stay at the bedside of life, lifetime partner. 
it is because they cannot tell their they cannot tell their partners, family members about the nature of the relationships, and they say that their friends, due to Japanese social customs that privilege family members over friends, they must leave their partner's bedside in such serious serious situations. Well, lastly, I'd like to answer the question, why do you come out? To my 20s, I came out because I didn't like being assumed to be heterosexual, and I wanted to be more honest to friends. But in my 30s onward, I had to deal with passing away of some of gay friends, including my best friend. As a result, I have been coming out and speaking out in order to help build a society where gay people can take care of their partners with ease, and where, should they have to face the prospect of eternal separation, they can be together till the end, able to say goodbye as they want, without worrying about getting strange looks. Little by little, this is slowly becoming a reality. The fact I'm standing here speaking with you today is proof of that. Thank you.